Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to take a look at processing dialog in Isotope RX. So this is Isotope RX 9, this is the full version. And I want to see how we can take a less than stellar piece of audio, this is a voiceover, and how we can make it the best it can be. I want to discuss some technical specifics, how exactly I'm using some modules, and then discuss my overall kind of workflow for this, how I would approach cleaning up a piece of audio like this. Let's just jump straight. So first off, this is me reading uh, a review of RX9. I think it was from Sound on Sound. Let's let's take a listen and hear any any issues that that pop out to our ears. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules, but they have substantially upgraded three of the previous ones, as well as enhancing the underlying editor platform. Two of the upgrades are restricted to the advanced version and will benefit audio for video customers most but more broadly based users will definitely appreciate the upgrades included in the standard version. So there's something here for everyone. Okay, so right off the bat, there's a few issues that I can hear there. First off, there was a heater. It's pretty cold at the moment in January in the UK. Um, so there's a heater going, so that's something we're gonna have to address. There's a lot of mouth click issues. There are some plosives in there that I'm going to need to address and some breaths that I think I wanna get rid of. Let's talk in terms of broad strokes first. Issues like mouth clicks are going to be there regardless of whether we do denoising or, or whatever it is. So they can kind of be left to the end, in my opinion. They're something that we do at the end, but are a broad stroke kind of thing. We don't zone in on each little click and get rid of it, get rid of the next one. We do just a general pass. Similarly with uh, overall kind of hum removal, noise removal, that is a, a broad stroke thing, largely speaking. So first off, I'm going to deal with the issue of the heater and then go in a bit more in depth. So for this, I'd like to use the dialogue isolate because I think that especially in version nine, this has just come on leaps and bounds. It's a fantastic um, utility. So dialogue isolate over here. I like to bring my noise gain all the way down. My sensitivity at the moment, I'm going to leave at five, um, just see kind of how it sounds. Ambience preservation is one that you kind of have to do on a case by case basis. If you want a little bit of that ambience, if it's a case of it was recorded in a certain space and you want it to feel like it was recorded in that certain space, you would maybe bring that up a touch. For this, I need this to be clean as clean, really dry. So I'm just gonna leave it at zero. And then quality, I like to have at the best just to be as good as it can be. Um, um, because we're offline, we don't necessarily need to worry about computer power or all that kind of stuff. We can just click render and see what it sounds like. So for this, let's just click, um, let's not even go for preview. Let's just go for render and just see, because we can kind of look at how it's affecting stuff. We can see in these gaps how it's going to remove bits um, and just see how well it actually gets rid of all the stuff that isn't dialogue, how well it isolates that dialogue. Let's click render. So just by looking at the spectrogram, we can see exactly what it's done. In this area in particular, we can see a lot of black there, a lot of nothingness. If I go to my history section and go back to my initial state and take a look at this section, we'll see there's a lot of, uh, a lot of noise there. But take a look at the beginning. The beginning remains after Dialogue Isolate has taken place. It remains there. I think this is because it's not had a chance to kind of listen to the dialogue yet. It's not had a chance to actually work out what the dialogue element is. But let's take a listen to it, how it stands now and how it stood before we did that dialogue isolate. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules, but they have substantially upgraded three of the previous ones, as well as enhancing the underlying editor platform. Yep, pretty good. It's got rid of everything that isn't dialogue and that's exactly what I wanted. It's isolated my dialogue nicely. That bit at the beginning, I'm going to come to in a second because there are a few ways we could combat that, a few ways we could get rid of one specific part, um, but I'd like to tie that in when I delve in a bit deeper on some other bits. One thing you'll notice though is that Dialogue Isolate has kind of dealt with a few of the breaths as well. If we go back to the initial state, we can hear in this one section there's kind of a long breath, new processing modules, but they have substantial which goes over the top of the, of the noise, but it's definitely a breath. RX has actually got rid of that for us, but they have substantial 
So we don't need to go in and, and de-breath, remove the breath on that section, which is handy, which kind of makes sense because it's not dialogue, is it? But some things like that, some artifacts as we would call them, sometimes they're gonna be good, sometimes they're not gonna be as good. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're using that dialogue isolate. It will literally just get the dialogue. It won't get any other noises that we kind of make with our mouths or our bodies when we are speaking. Just something to bear in mind. So de-click, this is something that, as I said, we can just do in really broad strokes. We can just click go and it will just, just do its thing. I like to have my sensitivity, now 6.7, it's a bit of an arbitrary number, but I've just found that this kind of works quite well for me. The frequency skew we can put down to low frequency or high frequency. It tends to be that they're more high frequency than low frequency, but for me, I tend to find that having it in the middle somewhere tends to kind of catch the large majority of them. Let's find a section with a few just so we can hear a difference. Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules. There's a few in there. Extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules. So we'll take a listen to that when we've processed the whole lot. I'm just going to click render. I'm not going to take a look at any of the other settings on there. I'm just going to have my sensitivity up to where I like it, 6.7, and then click render. 80 clicks repaired. What I like to do now is do another pass of it. And it's got another 50 clicks. I often find that running two passes means that the first one kind of unmasks the, the rest of them for RX to kind of listen to. For whatever reason, that just works best. So having two passes of mouth D-click runs best for me. Let's take a listen to that section now and see if it's got rid of all those mouth D-clicks. Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules. Completely got rid of them. Fantastic. Just what we want. So that's broad strokes. Um, broad strokes for me are the beginning things that I do. I want to get rid of all the noise, all the extraneous noise, and just get left with the dialogue. So dialogue isolate does that nicely. And then mouth de-click just gets rid of all those nasty kind of clappy mouth smacky noises that we don't want in there. Breaths would be next for me, but because I've run Dialog Isolate, that's kind of got rid of them. So let's dive in a little bit more and get into the nitty gritty of it and start dealing with some plosives. Now I heard a plosive right at the very beginning. If I get rid of mouth D-click, for this latest development, it's kind of some low end information. You can really easily see low end information on RX. If you just take a look at the bottom here, you can see that we've got a bump you can see we've got a bump there, a bump there. Some of these aren't gonna to be too much of an issue, but there's a handy feature in RX that I like to use to make a marker where all of these plosives are. So if I get rid of my repair for a moment and go to find similar. So make a selection to find similar events. Well, I'm just gonna make a selection around that one plosive for a moment and then go find all. And that's going to find all the instances that RX thinks is a plosive all the stuff that is kind of that short, transient, low-end information. If I click Find All, it's found a few for me. If I bring the similarity down and click Find All again, it's gonna find even more. So that similarity, because that initial noise wasn't really a plosive, it was just kind of some, some low-end information. So it's finding stuff that's vaguely similar to that. You may want to zone in on an actual real life plosive and then run that um, find similar and just tailor this similarity a bit to, to your source audio. For me, I'm going to bring this up to 0.2, go find all again because that's got kind of a bit too many. Let's go back to 0.3. It's kind of missing a few of them. So what I'm going to do then, let's go to an actual plosive, that first one there. I and let's just find one the platform by yeah platform and let's go find all bring that similarity up a little bit okay i think that's got the majority of them let's then go to add markers so we can create a marker at every single point the where it's told us that there is a, a plosive and then what we can do is if we solo in on that one section where we can see there is uh, a marker that's been found and go to repair then we can go to plosive and we can render that one plosive there and then if we click uh, option and the right arrow it will go to the next marker so we can then grab that one and do the same thing this is one of those kind of laborious tasks that you do have to just dig into everything let's see if we can do it as a broad stroke though let's see if we can just grab the entire file and then deplosive the whole lot because i suppose that should just find the plosives it shouldn't find anything that isn't a plosive so let's select everything 
and then let's go for render. Now, my sensitivity, I like to have five, my strength, I have around five, and then my frequency limit, I like to bring down a touch because because I'm a male speaking, for my voice, it tends to be that anything up at the default of 200 hertz, that can be vowel sounds and things like that. So I tend to bring that down to around 142. Let's just see what it does. Let's click render on the whole file. Okay, so you can see that's got rid of a large portion of that real low end, basically everything below 142. Let's see if we've lost that kind of low end information. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules, but they have substantially upgraded three of the previous ones. Yeah, I feel like that's lost a bit of the resonance in the low end. I feel like it's got rid of a bit of the, the bottom end of my voice. So I think the best thing here is to go in and just do these plosives manually. It's laborious, it's a bit of a nightmare task, but because we've created those markers, we can do that really easily, really simply, and I'm gonna do that now. Okay, cool, I've got rid of those. I'm just using the time selection tool just to kind of draw a bracket around it and then clicking render on deep plosive. Let's see how that has improved our audio. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules, but they have substantially upgraded three of the previous ones, as well as enhancing the underlying editor platform. That certainly cleaned it up quite a lot. Now, it seems to me like from this black section here onwards, there are fewer gaps in the in the voice. So that dialogue isolate has kind of done a bit of a, a better job, relatively speaking, because there are fewer gaps for there to be noise in. So it sounds like it's better. But if we look at the beginning and actually at the end as well, and in these sections here, we can see that there is still elements of noise there. Now, that's often going to happen it's not going to be absolutely perfect. And there are a few ways that we could get rid of this. The first way, if we just zoom in a touch, is we can go in and we can capture a noise print of that. So let's just take a listen to that one section. That's kind of where my breath was, so maybe that's not the best one to do. Let's go right back to the beginning and capture that one. Yeah, so that's, that's the noise. So let's go to our spectral denoise module, and then we'll click learn on this. And that is going to capture the essentially capture the sound of the noise so it can get rid of it in, in the rest of the file. Okay, it knows what that sounds like now. If I zoom out, select everything and just go render. And that should get rid of a bit more of that noise for us. Yep, so we can see on the display that has reduced that by a bit more. Let's take a listen. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by adding any brand new processing modules, but they have substantially upgraded three of the previous ones as well as enhancing the underlying editor platform. It's still not perfect. There's a few routes we could go down here. On a lot of these plugins, I've just been going on default settings and clicking render, which is, is fine for demonstration purposes, um, and that is the way that you could do it. You'd be better off tailoring these a little bit and perhaps saving them as presets so you know that is the noise that you want to get rid of in this scenario, that's the kind of deplosive you want to get rid of in this scenario. But for this, I want to show you how we can use a really interesting tool, um, the Instant Process tool. Now, let me zoom in a little bit and go back to the beginning. It's just down here, Instant Process, and we can get to this using a shortcut by just pressing I. That will turn Instant Process on or off. And we can do a few different things in here. We can attenuate this certain section. We can de-click, fade, gain, replace. We can do a whole host of things. I like to just do gain here. I like to have it so that on my instant process tool, when it's selected, I can just draw around a certain area and it will remove that certain piece of audio by a set gain amount. And I'll show you how to do that now. If we get rid of repair for a moment and just go to utility, our gain level, as default, I have it set to plus 10 because I tend to bring stuff up in here. Whole other story. Um, but here, let's just go to minus 10. And now every time I use that instant process on gain, I press I and it's automatically set to gain. If I select something, it's gonna bring it down by 10 dB because that's what I've set my gain to. So let's do that on a couple of these extraneous noises. Let's select it, once we release, it gets rid of it by 10 dB. Let's do it again so we can't see it at all. There we go, that's gonna have completely got rid of that sound. Let's take a listen. For this latest development, Isotope haven't extended the platform by Cool, let's do it on the next one. And then one more. 
it's almost invisible. One thing you need to remember here is that the spectrogram is very powerful. And just because you can see a small dot here or a small dot there, it doesn't mean it's going to be audible when it's actually exported and when you get this piece of audio, whatever it is, this voiceover, whatever it is. It doesn't mean it's actually going to be audible or that audible relative to the rest of the audio that's there. It's just the fact that it's registering as having something. So we've taken this lot here down by 30 decibels. We did three takes of that minus 10 instant process. So although there's something there, it was fairly quiet in the first place. It's now minus 30 dB quieter than that, which is very, very quiet indeed. You're not going to be able to hear that above anything at all, unless you're like massively compressing it, but don't, don't do that. So let's just do the same thing to the first section here, instant process couple of times 20 db down excellent if we zoom out let's see if we've got any small extraneous noises that we want to deal with one here what is that two of the upgrades it's kind of a bit of a breath which has been caught by that dialogue isolate let's get rid of it so easy this instant process just to draw around something and just just get rid you can also do this on a like a frequency basis as well just here we've got a bit of noise just in the low end. Now if I were to capture the whole thing, then it's kind of redundant. There's not much point in doing that because it's doing the whole frequency spectrum. So instant process is applicable to any of these tools. We can click the magic wand and just click that one section and it's just going to get rid of that based on a certain threshold. We can paint it out, which I love to do. I think that's a really handy tool. Just paint it out there. Or we could undo that, get the marquee tool and just draw around it and say, get rid of you by 10 dB. And it's as simple as that. Or we could do it using any of the tools. It, it doesn't matter. They will do the same thing in that instance. So digging into it with a little bit more precision is where the extra kind of 5 10% really comes into play. Doing those broad strokes is something that I always like to start off with because I find that doing that first gets me that initial 20, 30% or maybe even 50, 60% and gets me to a really good point where if there's an overall noise and overall underlying kind of current there, I can just get rid of that with one process, with one module, and then move on to the more in-depth stuff. I hope it's been useful for you. That's kind of how I would do it in one specific scenario. There are other ways that you could do it if you had other problems that were um, apparent in your audio. If you had clicks and pops and that kind of stuff, then we could do that. We could clean up a clicky, crackly record, for example. Maybe I'll do a video on that another time just to see what it's like. If you want to see that, if you want to see how you can restore vinyl um, using RX, drop a comment below because that's a really powerful thing to be able to do here. Uh, and it is entirely possible. I've done that numerous times and it's quite fun actually. Um, so yeah, let me know below if you want to see that. Hope that's been useful. Uh, just seeing exactly how I do stuff, my overall kind of thought process, starting with the broad strokes and then getting a bit more in depth and how I use the tools that are in these modules because they are so powerful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.